this is Sincere, a teacher Sincere's channel, and welcome once again. So, it's been a few weeks, but I'm back, and uh, I'm back to uh, share a book that I finished up last night reading. Uh, this is the book, it's called Tethered to Stars, Poems, Fadi Judah, okay? This is the book, not my book, it's a library book, but um, I had not read any poetry in a while, so I was trying to decide... Um, whether I wanted to uh, read, maybe go back and read some poetry by Mahmoud Darwish, who is the National Poet of the Palestinians or some somebody else. I, I didn't know. Um, but I decided, I started looking around on Goodreads for different Palestinian poets. And so I found Fadi Joda. Uh, Fadi Joda um, is, um, I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, he is Palestinian American. He's a physician, a physician, a doctor, and a poet. And, uh, he lives here in the United States. Uh, he was actually born here, I think, in Texas. Uh, an amazing fun fact I found out about him is, um, he actually has the same alma mater as me. He went to the University of Georgia. That's my alma mater where I got both my bachelor's and my master's degree. So I was really surprised to find out that we went to the same uh, university. Um, and then he ended up going to the Medical College of Georgia. And then according to Wikipedia, uh, it says that he uh, is a, a doctor out in Houston, Texas. So, uh, and I like Houston. I've been to Houston before. I've been to Texas. So I kind of like Houston. It's hot out there, but uh, I like it. But, um, but yeah, this is called Tethered the Stars. Uh, this is like a constellation here, like a woman's head, and she's kissing the earth, okay? Um, so, um, what did I think about the book? I gave it three stars. Not because it was, the poetry was bad. Not by any means it was not bad. The poetry was good. But I'm not that much into like sort of modernist poetry. Uh, I don't like that. I like more traditional type poetry. Not necessarily like everything has to be rhymed and everything. I like, you know, free verse, all of that. I don't mind. But, um, I it, it, it's a I think it's a good poetry book, but I just gave it three stars on Goodreads. Um, I think some of the imagery in it is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it's very interesting what he did in the book. Throughout the book, he sort of sprinkled different terminology that's from science, from astronomy, uh, also from uh, I think probably biology and physiology. Uh, and it's really it, it's it's interesting. There are some wonderful in, imagery imagery in the book. Also, he did a poem in tribute to Sandra Bland. Uh, if you don't remember who Sandra Bland is, uh, I said the poem is called Sandra Bland, Texas. Sandra Bland was a uh, young African American woman that got into. Uh, she was stopped at a. She was stopped by the police in a traffic stop uh, for a traffic violation. And I think it was back in 2015. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And um, she uh, was. She got into an altercation with the police. She was arrested. And she ended up, they put her in jail, and she ended up hanged in her cell uh, under suspicious circumstances. Um, but he actually did a poem in tribute to her, okay? Uh, and I thought that was really nice. Um, I was actually, I actually thought when I read the book that I would be reading things more about Palestine, but he didn't really make any poetry that directly was related to Palestine, from what I could tell from the imagery. Uh, also, um, but I, I just think overall it's a good book. I would not say don't read it. You know, if you like poetry, if you like modernist poetry, some of the imagery was very interesting. Um, some of the things he said, I think it was really good, but I'm not really a big fan of this really, you know, this, the modernist poetry more. I like more sort of traditional style, but yeah, but this is, uh, Fadi Joda, um, Tethered to Stars. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more about a couple of other books that I'm going to try that I'll be presenting next. Now, next, okay, I sort of got off track. I was not planning to read his book, but like I said, because of everything that's been going on uh, in Gaza, I decided I want to read some poetry. I want to read something that is by a Palestinian. So I chose him. There were some others that I saw. And like I said, there's Mahmoud Darwish, who is the... Uh, the National Poet of the Palestinians. I've read uh, a couple of his books that I really, really love. I love his poetry. I would say he is up there at the top. 
Also, another fun fact I want to bring up about Fadi Joda is that um, some of the, uh, I think about three books of translation of Mahmoud Darwish's poetry, he actually translated the poetry, okay? Um, there's one I read, I remember called The Butterfly's Burden. He translated that one. And I think I, re I sort of recall uh, seeing uh, his name now. I saw, I saw that name kind of looks familiar, but I couldn't exactly Place, place where it came from. But yeah, um, but he actually translated, I think, two or three books, uh, of, by Mahmoud Darwish. And if you want to see some of his poetry online, uh, you can just, you know, do a Google search or whatever search engine you use and you'll find his poetry at like Poetry Foundation and some other, uh, websites as well. Um, he is an award winning poet. So, uh, that's all about Tethered to Stars. Uh, uh, three stars on Goodreads, but I, I like it, but it, I, I think I recommend the book, but it's just not my kind of cup of tea that I like in the uh, genre of poetry. So next, when I come back, unless I change my mind, because I can be fickle <laughs> at times, unless I change my mind, um, I am trying to wrap up uh, volume one of Memoirs of a Babylonian Princess, Maria Teresa Asmar, daughter of Emir Abdullah Asmar that I've shown you before. Uh, Maria Teresa Asmar was a Chaldean Christian. She was born in Iraq. Uh, her family originated in India and they went to Iraq uh, like uh, the book was actually published in the 1840s. Her family had went to Iraq from India. They were from the Brahmin class and they had uh, journeyed there uh, like 300 years before. So sometimes it's a 18, uh, let's see, 17, uh, 16, let's see, sometimes maybe 1500s, 1500s. So they must have arrived in Iraq or Mesopotamia, uh, what was at that time uh, in the 1500s. But I'm trying to finish up the book. I'm close to finishing volume one. Okay. Um, it actually uses, this is my bookmark here. Okay. I got this years ago at Dollar Tree of all places. Okay. One dollar and it's wooden and it has like the metal. If you look here, it's got like imagery. You might can't see it very well, but it's uh, elephants. Okay. So it's wooden. I have some really neat, um, bookmarks and I also use postcards as well for my bookmarks but yeah um, the actual print in the book if you can see it it is actual print it is the actual facsimile of the original book that was published back in the 1840s so I'm almost finished with volume one and what I'll probably do is do a review uh, a book review talk about it um, when I finish volume two this is volume two I got volume two about a month ago Okay, so um, so far so good. I really like her book. It's interesting. Uh, her memoir. Um, right now in the book, she uh, just left. She spent several weeks or several months uh, after her after she was basically sort of orphaned as an older teenager. Uh, I think she might have been an older teenager at the time. Uh, she ended up. Uh, uh, she went to Baghdad and she tried to start up a school for. Uh, girls and women because she was a big advocate of education for girls and women big advocate of it uh, even way back then and um, just really a remarkable person and she ended up going after she was sort of cheated out of her school she ended up going and spending time with better ones uh, in the area of what they call Babylon I think it's called Hilla in Iraq, and, and and it's called Babylon, the old area of Babylon, and she stayed with these Bedouin people. That she just really just fell in love living around them, uh, and, and even though she was Christian, they accepted her fully. And right now, she's left uh, the group. Uh, she really wanted to stay with them. She thought it, at the end that she maybe could convert them to Christianity, but she saw that was going to be next to impossible. But she really loved them because she loved the just the whole attitude about life. Uh, the uh, things about being honorable and honest and helping others uh, that the better one had, uh, just this sort of general outlook on life. She really found that very admirable. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I really, I, I'm really enjoying her memoir and I'm almost finished with book one, volume one, and uh, I will do a talk about it uh, in another video. Finally, what I've been doing, I started another book. I know I said I can't read like I used to read eight, you know, six to eight books at a time, but I'm trying. Okay. I'm going to, you know, like, like uh, what 50 Cent said, get rich or die trying. <laughs> I'm going to read or die trying. 
I'm going to do that. But anyway, I started reading. Um, I decided because I've been very curious about this book for a number of years. Um, the book is Jubilee by uh, Margaret Walker. OK, Margaret Walker was an African-American writer and Jubilee was like the only I think she was an educator as well. And it was the only uh, novel that she wrote. OK, uh, and Jubilee was set during uh, pre-Civil War times on the slave plantation uh, and also during the Civil War. Uh, so I started it. I started reading. I don't have the actual book. Now, the, the memoir here is my, are my actual books, but the poetry book I showed you is not mine. It's the library book so uh i'm actually reading uh jubilee on a uh on the uh libby library app so i'm reading that one uh so i'm trying to tackle that one still reading saint augustine city of god but that's something that you know i'm not reading it's not like reading for pleasure this is christian philosophy a thousand plus pages so uh i will do whenever it might be next year sometime <laughs> Because, you know, when you're reading philosophical works, if you're reading religious works, it's not something like you just fly through. You want to sort of contemplate and think about it and all that. So uh, so I'm reading St. Augustine, still on St. Augustine's The City of God. I would be close to finishing it, but um, I was reading it on Kindle, and then my mother gave me a copy of it for my birthday. And so I started all the way back over because I wanted to see did I miss anything in the translation that's with the Penguin Classics. But, uh, but yeah, um, um, I'm working on that one. And also, when I finished um, Maria Teresa Asmar's book, I'm going to go back to reading uh, uh, Virginia Woolf's Orlando. I started reading it back two or three months ago and then sort of set it aside. So my, my, um, my trajectory with reading is kind of messy right now. It's messy. Uh, uh, it's not very organized. I'm just sort of all over the place. Uh, I'm getting distracted. You know, it's just so, you know, the choices of books are just endless. Okay. You can just do totally just a YouTube channel on books. And there are people on YouTube besides myself, you know, of course, and I follow them. Uh, you know, I follow people like the Grim Reader and everything and other people. And uh, so you can just do a book. Of, you, you never run out of material. With books, you can just go on forever. Okay. So, um so um, what I am going to do, which this brings up something about what I want to say before I end this video, um, what I've decided I want to do is uh, actually uh, I wanted to, uh, uh, I've decided that I'm going to narrow my channel down further, okay? I've been sort of trying to decide what I was going to do about my channel. You know, I have times I feel like I'm just not going to do YouTube anymore. I don't have the time. I, 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 you know, I, you know, you know, is it, am I wasting time? All of that, you know, I don't have time to waste, but I decided, I said, Hey, what I need to do, what I think I'm going to do, you know, I enjoy making YouTube videos. I do, but I can't make them every week. I can't make them every day. I can't do that. I just don't have the time the way my, you know, my life is and, you know, my work and teaching. So what I I decided though I'm going to narrow my channel down basically to two topics books and I want to go back to the good old days of when I started out my channel uh making things about history making like little mini documentaries what I call mini documentaries about different historical figures culture all of that and just have two my channel two topics OK, so I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. Um, I really love, uh, you know, my videos myself. I liked when I did the videos about Queen of Monoranus and uh, also about um, uh, what was his name? Antara Ibn Shaddad, uh, people like that. And I did another video back. So a little documentary about the culture in Turkey. This was way back. You can go back on my timeline. In fact, I recommend look back on my channel and and, and look at some of my old videos, even old videos I did about learning English. These are very important, but I decided I'm just going to narrow my channel down to that because, uh, initially, um, I thought about, Oh, I want to do many docs. So like many documentaries, um, there's a YouTube channel called history tea time with Lindsay. I really admire her channel. I really do. And, um, I, I said, I would really like to do a channel like that. Um, it's so much fun. You know, for me, it's fun looking for the pictures, making the, you know, just gathering all the material, writing the script for those kind of videos. It's so much fun. So I decided that's what I'm going to do with my channel, books and also about history, just different historical people, uh, whether they're American, all around the world, any interesting, unknown, lesser known people that 
that, you know, a lot of people uh, may not know about in, you know, certain places. So that's what I decided to do. Literary figures, them too. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, so I think that that's how I'm going to do my channel from now on out. So, uh, I'm going to end here. Um, oh, and just also a quick uh, mention about uh, my friend Walla in Gaza. Still alive as of yesterday. Okay, so she's still around. Uh, keep praying for the people of Gaza if you're a praying person. Um, uh, hope that this war will end uh, soon. Uh, of course, there will be many, much loss and many scars for years and years from now on for many people, okay? But some of the people in Gaza are devout people, and they understand how this life works, okay? You have to understand how this life works. If you, you know, if you look, uh, put on rose-colored glasses and try to make this, I know I'm getting to preaching, okay? I like to, okay? But uh, I like to do my preaching sometimes. <laughs> but if you're a person that sees life through rose-colored glasses, uh, you're, you, you don't have very good survival skills, OK, I'm just going to be honest with you. You don't. OK, so you have to be ready for the fight. And some of the people there were ready for the fight. Uh, I follow uh, a, U a YouTube channel of a he's a lawyer. He lives there, uh, has three little three little children. And I followed his page on Instagram. He actually followed me back. Uh, and um, but unfortunately, he does all of his channel in Arabic. But still, I can get an idea uh, of sort of what's going on. Just by looking. Uh, but uh, he seems to be the kind of person that went from like upper middle class to wealthy the way, way it looked from uh, his videos and pictures to now like scrounging for food, family living by the sea in a tent. And uh, they're holding on. OK, because you just don't know in this life. This life is so transient. Everything's transient here. So you have to be you have to understand how this place works and have a strategy. Uh, so, or else you're going to end up where you're, you know, you're going to give up or live in total despair or either you'll live a lie. So you have to be, you know, be prepared for what's out here. So anyway, uh, so that's my little tidbit for the day, my little preaching tidbit, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, so my channel from here on out will be focused solely on books and also on history. That's how I decided to do it. Um, I may bring in a little bit about what I do, but I've done enough about that. Uh, I might show, I've been thinking about showing the platform that I work on and sort of let you see the kind of subject matter that I teach uh, as an English, as a, a foreign language teacher. But I, I, I'll see. We'll see. But anyway, uh, but that's what I mainly want to focus on. Um, it's kind of good for the algorithm to be on one topic in a way. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not, I don't consider myself a legitimate, a legit uh, content creator. I'm not because this is not what I do. I don't want to be no, oh, sincere uh, content creator. No, I'm I'm teacher sincere, an English teacher. But I do like uh, doing content and um, it, it's fun. It's my hobby. It's one of my hobbies. So I'm going to end here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. So this is Sincere. Until next time.